Did you know? The Nintendo Entertainment System, or Family Computer in Japan, was almost the world's first online multiplayer gaming system. According to Shigeru Miyamoto, plans for an online multiplayer network were scrapped due to the telecommunication infrastructure at the time not being able to support it. Nintendo eventually released a modern peripheral for the Famicom in Japan, but it wasn't used for gaming. Instead, it was positioned as a device for adults. It allowed users to view and trade stocks, gamble on horse races, and view banking data, amongst other things. Due to persistent connection problems and the inability to attract financial savvy users, to the child-friendly gaming console, support for the modem was dropped. But according to Nintendo hardware designer Masayuki Yamura, the experience with the Famicom modem helped lead the Super Famicom Satellite View add-on. The development of the Famicom began in the spring of 1982 under the codename Project Gamecom. Initially, Nintendo's research and development division were interested in creating a system that would allow near one-to-one -one ports of arcade hits in the home market. In fact, when negotiating with chip manufacturers for their upcoming console, Nintendo brought the arcade version of Donkey Kong as an example of what they wanted. Instead of using the other home game consoles as a reference. Ultimately, the final CPU chosen for the Famicom's hardware was different from what Nintendo used in their arcade machines. This meant that the porting process of arcade games wouldn't be as simple as converting the pre-existing program. The games had to be recreated from scratch. In the case of Donkey Kong, designers meticulously examined every pixel of the arcade screen and measured the timing of animations with a stopwatch. The outer design of the Famicom was given the color red by request of Nintendo president Hiroshi Yamauchi because it was the color of his favorite scarf. The console's eject button, which would cause cartridge to pop out was suggested by designer Gunpei Yokai. It served no practical purpose and was simply added because he thought children would like it. The Famicom came with two controllers hardwired into the back of the unit. This was done in an effort to reduce costs, but the decision was made after initial plans to add controller connection ports to the front. Remnants of this can be found inside the system, as the controller wires actually connect in the front of the circuit board, but are extended out to the back internally. More early plans for the Famicom's controllers included arcade-like joysticks, but Nintendo eventually settled on using their patented D-pad from the Game & Watch portables. In fact, at one point, a Game & Watch unit was gutted and wired to the board of the Famicom prototype as a controller for testing. Like the Game & Watch, early releases of the Famicom controller came with soft, rubbery buttons, but these soft buttons wore down easily, causing Nintendo to update the controllers with hard, round buttons. Concerns over degradation also informed the design of the game cartridges. Nintendo worried about the physical quality of the cartridge pins because of the bad experiences with faulty connections and abrasion in their arcade units. So, rather than using pre-existing connection technology, Nintendo developed their own custom hardware. However, this meant that they had to test the connections themselves. This resulted in a period where employees were tasked to insert and remove games over 5,000 times in a row to ensure the cartridges wouldn't degrade for average users. Because of different cultures and expectations, Nintendo made drastic changes to the Famicom when releasing it overseas. Unlike Japan, North America experienced a monumental video game market crash in 1983, and retailers were unsure about the viability of home consoles in the region. Nintendo's first console unveiling for North America came at the Las Vegas Consumer Electronics Show in 1983, and was met with criticism. At this time, the console was renamed the Nintendo Advanced Video Systems. The new name and design was chosen to distinguish the system from other gaming consoles, partially due to the poor reputation video games garnered from the market crash. One change in the design ended up causing internal damage to many NES consoles over time. The Famicom's cartridge slot was changed to a front-loading cartridge socket on the NES. This was an effort to more closely associate the system with a common household item, the VCR. However, the force of repeatedly pressing cartridges down caused extra wear and tear, leading to glitches and system failures. Many gamers reacted to these problems by blowing into the cartridges to clean them. This did nothing at best because it failed to address the real problem. And at worst, the moisture from the player's breath actually sped up corrosion and the tarnishing of the copper connectors. On the marketing side of things, Rob, the robotic operating buddy, and the NES Zapper were included in various bundles to help sell the system as a toy. This was another effort to disassociate the NES with other video game systems. The Japanese version of the NES Zapper, the Famicom Gun, is slightly different. It was originally released with the game Wild Gunman and is based on a revolver-style handgun. The way the Famicom Gun and NES Zapper actually functions is similar to a camera. When the trigger is pressed, the screen goes black for a single frame. If the Zapper's light sensor didn't detect any light, it goes on to the next step. On the next frame, the screen displays a white square where the target is. If the gun sensor detects the square, then it registers it as a hit. If it fails one of the tests, it registers as a miss. Rob worked very similarly and communicated via optical sensors and flashes from the television. Because of differing refresh rates, both the NES Zapper and Rob only work with CRT televisions, not with LCD or plasma screen TVs. The NES and Famicom had more interesting peripherals. Nintendo experimented using 3D visuals with a stereoscopic headset called the Famicom 3D system. The headset caused nausea and 
and headaches. It wasn't commercially successful, and it was never released outside of Japan. Another unreleased peripheral was aimed at a different audience. Nintendo once planned a knitting add-on for the NES called the Nintendo Knitting Machine. Outside of North America and Japan, the NES made its debut in a variety of other regions, both officially and unofficially. In South Korea, the system was distributed by Hyundai Electronics under the name Comboy. This was due to a trade embargo South Korea enacted on Japan after World War II. An unofficial clone of the Famicom was sold in China under the guise of an educational system. At the time, the Chinese government had a ban on recreational video games. The clone was known as the Little Tyrant, and the system was endorsed by film star Jackie Chan in commercials and promotional material. In 1992, Russia and other former members of the Soviet Union saw the release of the Taiwan-manufactured Dendi system. It was an unofficial hardware clone of the NES, and nearly its entire library of games were bootlegs of NES and Famicom games. By 1994, over 1 million Dendis were sold, at a price of roughly $35 per unit. One last bit of trivia about the Famicom comes from its home country. Nintendo of Japan continued to support the 1983 console for nearly a quarter of a century. It wasn't until 2007 that Nintendo of Japan announced that they would no longer repair Famicom systems, and it was only due to the increasing shortage of necessary parts. I'm afraid that's all for today, but don't forget to subscribe to Did You Know Gaming and follow Did You Know Gaming on Facebook and Twitter. Make sure you also check out DidYouKnowGaming.com, and if you like this video, please check out some more videos. And if you want to hear more of my horrendous voice, you can click on that new video I just uploaded at the same day this video went out, and it's the top 10 things in video games that scared the absolute crap out of me when I was a kid. Um, I'm sure loads of people can relate to that. And it's kind of related to Nintendo, I guess. There's a few Nintendo games in there. Uh, yeah. Okay, cool.